Hello everybody, CVH here, and today we're going to have some Merrick Battle Mage highlights on the ladder. As you can see, the version here is what we'll be playing, and it's also fully premium. I fully made the deck premium with the uh, the final touch being the premium Merrick itself, because obviously when it gives you premium items, uh, those items are obviously all you're looking for. Definitely the damage dealing ones, and definitely no maple shields. At least that's the hope. But this is the list, it's pretty simple, or pretty straightforward I should say. The deck itself is actually pretty interesting. I recommend checking out some guides online. SLW has a good one on legends-decks.com, and it's been referenced multiple times in our Between Lanes meta snapshot. It can play offensively against slower decks, relying on this pre-match Romancer and Merrick as well as burst damage with the Nord Firebrands from Markarth, Bannerman, and Raiding Party. That's typically the decks considered win condition. Uh, but it can also definitely play the defensive game with all of the early removal actions, the Skaven Pyromancers are three of, and crazy Breton Conjure things as well. We have ways to reward them with the Sentinel Battle Mazes and the Ward Crafters. Some versions even play Lesser Ward with Shimmerine Peddler, uh, and a lot of good pings. The Skavens I mentioned, Rapid Shots I mentioned, good offensively with the Bretons, good defensively as well, and Sweepers and Ice Storm, of course. Uh, so definitely a deck that can generate some really powerful tempo plays. And in this version, the only thing that's really different is we're testing two Two copies of Rift and Pickpocket over the more common inclusion. Actually, a few things that you normally see in these slots, but uh, the Thief of Dreams has been really common recently in this deck. But uh, PDMD in my chat told me to test the Rift and Pickpockets over them, so that's exactly what we did for a few games. Don't know if I recommend them yet, but it's definitely something you could potentially play. So hopefully you guys enjoy some Merrick Battle Mage on the ladder, and as always, if you do, feel free to leave a like, subscribe to the channel for more Legends content, and follow my stream in the description. I'll see you guys next time. You mean like for today or for all time? Because that sounds insane. It's got to be one of the snapshots. It's got to be. Because some of the snapshots have more views than we have views today. Like that much, I know. Alright, Daggerfall's really good against Scout. Oh, he's high ranked too. Oh, he's always playing like some weird decks. I remember that. Could be a more aggressive Scout. Definitely could be. May just be today. All right, gotcha. <laughs> All right, I think I'll just save the word crafter. Go for Daggerfall next turn and see what happens. Don't take my metrics. I don't know if I can even turn them off if I wanted. Chicken scout, you think? Top five uh, prize chicken. All right, things are looking normal so far. Nothing crazy. Definitely want to ring into Markarth next turn. So I guess here I'll just go for Raiding Party. And a bit of damage, sure. Market Archer in the higher ranks. That's like the one deck I have a hard time developing an opinion on. Because I have played it so infrequently. Yeah, just start with some Merrick Battle Mage Blackbird. Let's see how a couple games go. He's smacking too. Two damage, ring the mark card. And the pass. Ooh, that's pretty good. Let's just get that out of there right now. Set up for Wardcrafter on the, uh, the mark card. Or not. Or maybe still yes, actually. I do want to ward it up before I attack so I don't get susceptible to cards like Sheer Point Dragon here. I think I won't be giving him another card this turn. Not quite yet. <laughs> Damn. Oh, does he have the Leaf Lurker too? That's a bummer. The is he does indeed have the Leaf Lurker. This could be a fine Ice Storm though, we can just clear everything. Including some of my own stuff, unfortunately. But you know, you gotta do what you gotta do. Got the Tome for some cycling. Got Brett and Skaven. Get some value out of the Skaven, I guess. Great commentary, yes! That's what we strive for here. Brett and Skaven's actually quite good against that. Mm. The lookout, huh? That's an interesting choice. Does that mean he's gonna go for another dragon next turn? Ooh, Breton Rapid Shot, though. 
Honestly, this Gaven makes sense because we bring it down to a 5 5, or a 6 5 rather, and then we threaten to trade 1 for 1 with the Breton Conjurer, or the Breton Conjurer's 5 5. So I don't mind it. Could just go for Breton Skaven. And we can save the Rapid Shot for an easy ping on the next Breton Conjurer. Like, this is pretty decent Skaven value, honestly. If I use the Rapid Shot instead, I'll just have to use like a Nord on that to finish it off or something, or just use the rest of this. Meh. The elements are mine to control. Let's heat things up. I think this is okay. To the skies. Yeah, the Market Archer that typically beats me does not usually play Smuggler's Hall. They usually just the ones that go uh go nuts with Nord Firebrands. We did draw another one. I'm getting kind of kinda of scared about Odevang next turn. He's ramping really hard. That seems like the perfect Odevang setup. The 5-5 five five took down what it was supposed to. Uh, this is a lot of ramp going on, man. Do I have any more options that aren't just Brett and Rapid Shot? It just seems like the play. Not like the right play, just the play. The elements are mine to control. Alright. That is, uh... Not unhelpful. Have enough magic to play it next turn. I could use the Tome here for some cycling. Hey, thanks, Swanky. Don't worry, CVH. The best mod has arrived at Sheffy. Yes. All right, let's take a cycle here. I'll kill you where you stand. Now, I could punch for a little more, but it gives him another card, and I'm really scared of that right here. Alright. We'll give it a pass. And hope he doesn't have a... I feel like it's Odeving, man. I do. Odeving, he's gonna... Uh, lose his 3-4, but heal for 4, first of all. Get a 10-10 on the board and clear everything on my board. Oh, it's not Odeving. TVH bless, man. Just a bareness and a shitload of 8 eights in the future. Not right now, though. Right now, we're good to go. Uh, so this might be the, uh, the Atro turn. <laughs> Man. How much damage if we want to send it on the face? 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 15, 19, 20. We can just deal 20. But I feel like I want to send one damage into that, and I also want to trade with that. Which is fine. I think that's fine. I'll kill you where you stand. Elements, I summon thee. You know, I guess I take this trade. Yeah, yeah. Just thinking about leaving it around in case I can reward it, but I don't think that's going to be relevant. He knows about all these Nords, so he's taking a lot of damage. Last turn would have probably been the Odeving turn. It was too good, right? What if he just has one? Regardless. So we sent most of our damage to face. And these don't matter yet. If he Odevings me, I lose. That's the one of we currently can't play around. There's always one of against Scout. It's either Odeving or Red Brahmin or Tazcad. You gotta pick one to just die to every time. And you know, if he has it this early, then he's gonna win the game. It's not even really that early. He has drawn a good bit of cards here. Your storm is no match uh, for mine. Feels bad, man. Hey, he didn't heal for four, though. Silver linings. Atro? Firebolt? Why is it always Firebolt that I top deck? I never want to draw Firebolt. All right, I'm Let's dead. Heat things up. The forest will not suffer I don't know. I'm <laughs> pretty dead, man. Oh, uh, they always have it. Even when you think they don't have it, they have it. Now, if we could have gotten him down to four without trading, I probably would have. But then if we don't do that and he has Odeving, he gets the four health gain because one of the things he has is the lookout. So that's why I wanted to kill that one. I think the trade does make sense. We just, we had one window and it's it's closing. Let's mill him out. <laughs> Your thumb is no match for mine. The 
Yeah, RIP the Merrick Dream, man. Another Ice Storm would have been good. We had like one turn where that would have maybe saved us. And both of these seem great in the matchup. Scouting ahead. We have the hand that tells you that you're probably not going to hit your cunning allies. What have we here? By the eight, but fortunately, a matchup where it's not always incredibly relevant. The waters of life. My scales moving. All right, I'm feeling the pickpocket. Pick a juicy one. Sure. Maybe I should have waited a bit longer to make that choice. But there are so many things that you'd really want to see in Scout. So many things that you don't want to have stolen. Next year, maybe raiding party, uh, cunning ally if we have the time. Depends on what he does. <laughs> Definitely going to play the ally. Let's shed some light on the problem. Yeah, I might as well do it now. I have the time, and I'm just gonna use one of the Nords to clear that. Start dealing a tiny bit of damage. Against a lot of decks, you play very passively. And then burst him down in a couple turns. Yeah, I can get a guaranteed proc last turn, but then I lose my 2-1. Is my 2-1 worth more or less than a, a free firebolt? That is the question. Should have just let me pick your pocket. Pressure, pressure, pressure. I have you now. Firebolt's also pretty low value in this matchup anyway. Pick a lane, buddy. Or is he trying to go between the lanes? I actually like pickpocket a lot in certain decks. I don't think the tempo loss is too bad. Against decks like this, you might want to play a little bit of a value game, too. And whatever tempo we lost playing the pickpocket, we're going to pick up again as soon as we drop this Tazcad. It's going to be pretty nice. Let's shed some light on the problem. Hey, Snaxy man, coming in with the host. Thank you very much, Snaxy. Welcome all of the Snaxy viewers. Hopefully you had a good stream. Just let me pick your Currently playing a bit of Merrick. We could clear that, but... Is that really relevant? I could just kill that and... Well, then I don't have anything else to do. Maybe I just double firebolt it and play Harpy in the left on that. He could do a bunch of crazy shit to me, though. I mean, I don't hate this. Gives me some utility out of my harpy. And the Shearpoint Dragon's a very scary card. Oh, played the Shackle Assassin. Oh, the, with the items and everything? Lots of items. You're playing three maces, right? Because I remember PDMD was playing two maces. Now I take some of his ideas, but that one... That one I couldn't justify. It's, like, it's gotta be three maces. It's a Shackle deck? It's an item deck? It's an item that shackles? Max it out, man. Simple math. Alright, well, that could have one-shotted my 3-3 if I'd left the other one. 
Thankfully, that's not what's happening. This might just be a Tazcad turn. Tazcad into the 3 5. Do I want to keep everything alive at 1, or do I just trade that in? I think I'll keep the things alive at 1. Still deal 3 damage, so I'm giving him a card here. I mean, that has more than 1 health now. I want to take the damage. So, the card we currently don't want to see is Red Brahmin. That is the one of we don't want to see this time. It's always 1. You must be cleansed. Make the Atromancer play and immediately lose to any and all copies of the one of Odaving. But probably nothing else. You gotta love it. Get him to eight. Very few prophecies we'd ever have to worry about here. Time to fight. If it is Red Brahmin, uh, you won't be able to simultaneously shackle the most things and get rid of my Atro's effect if we put this in the left. So uh, yeah, let's uh, you know get him to that 8 and hope our board doesn't get cleared this turn by the one single card that would do it. That'd be ideal. What is your real name? You can find that on my Twitter, no spoilers. All right, it's not Odaving, it's the other one of. This one isn't quite as bad. Sick. Actually, very into that. Never been happier to see Red Brahmin. These one ofs get you, man. You have nightmares about him. Oh god, it's a 50 card deck. Why does he have it? It's gonna AFK while I'm at work. Nice, enjoy the lurk. Okay. Nothing nuts. He only has five magical left. Another one? Don't be another one. That'd be super lame. The waters of life. All right, not as bad. So we can go for Daggerfall. Ooh, that's nice. I mean, it's not lethal. Unfortunately. We could just go Daggerfall, Skaven in the right, pop that off, get the ward off, tome that up, pretend Magicka, trade there, hit him down to six. And I like that play because we keep a Daggerfall in our hand with the Atro, so we deal, we get him to six with that play, we kill that, and we also have six damage immediately next turn, so we don't have to worry about anything interacting poorly with our turn. By the eight, they will meet their mate. Let's heat things up. <laughs> Nicely done. The rapid shots are relevant, right? I have you now. Might as well just hold it. We want him at six. Don't even really want him at five. We'll be playing against higher ranked opponents, more. people who also have one more. Uh, the Hail Mary Parthenex. Just got home from work, then it's a really happy Friday for you. Nice. We've planned for this. The entire board could die, and we'd still probably kill him as long as the first rune doesn't. Like, there's nothing. Like, you could get like a cursed specter or mummify, and then we wouldn't have our atromancer damage. <clears throat> but it doesn't look like he can even interact with this stuff. <laughs> I have been proven wrong. Two soul tears off of Parthenax. If I didn't have lethal, I'd be mad about that. Elements, I they will meet their makers. It has been an engaging hunt. It has been an engaging hunt. See, you can't nerf Atromancer, man. Atromancer is the thing keeping this deck in check. I don't even want to know what happens if you nerf Atromancer in this meta. This one is more interactive than Ice Storm Road or Death. It's only Ice Storm or Oda or Death against slow decks, which is what Atromancer punishes. Like, that's where it's good. 
Naturomancer punishes slow decks. Against slow decks, yeah, slow decks, there should be a card that says if you don't have a sweeper and you're already getting pressured, you lose. I'm okay with that, because if you don't have that, there's no reason to not play Ramp Scout. And if there's nothing punishing the deck, then why not play it? A good Ram Scout draw beats everything, and if there's no card that directly counters it, like, hell yeah! Naturomancer is like the only good card <laughs> in the late game against any of those decks. Careful there, friend. But yeah, it's it's pretty shitty when you're getting pressured. When's the last time you wanted to draw an Atromancer against an aggro deck? By the eight, they will meet their makers. And I'd like to see them limit the number of unique legendaries that are very good. So I'd like them, if, they, if there's like a powerful legendary like Daggerfall or Atro, don't make it unique. That's the problem I have with par uh, with mostly Odaving, Red Brahmin, and that kind of stuff, is that it's always a one-of in the deck, so it's really hard to justify playing against, or playing around those things as a player. A lot of the time, playing around them correctly just means hoping they don't have them, and that's pretty lame. And be pretty lame. I'm playing three maces now, don't be mad at me anymore. Would you really want three Odavings though? Mm. I can see certain decks playing too. I would definitely play multiple Red Brahmins. Hell yeah. I'd play three Red Brahmins in a heartbeat. Oh jeez, this is not gonna be good. Um, I play mine, it dies. Because that's just how these things go. Where are the lightning bolts? Where are the harpies? I mean, I'm doing it. Follow me, men. Oh, thank you very much, Jimmy Gibbs. Glad you liked him. Three in deck, but max one on board. Well, that wouldn't really do anything to Atro, man, so it's very rare that you get the Atro into Atro chain. Like, if you stick an Atro for a turn, most of your cards, like any creature, is just going to kill your opponent. The elements are mine to control. <laughs> What's your favorite thing? And you're awesome, and this is Fintim's son Alex typing, and I'm in the third grade reading young adult books. <laughs> I don't even know what's happening anymore. What's my favorite thing? Currently, the smoothie I'm drinking. Oh my god, it lived! What? I'm unprepared for this positive variance. It never happens. If anything, the issue with Unique Legendaries at the moment is that Soul Tear can loop them. Uh, that's, a, that's a Soul Tear problem, though. Like, I've always had that issue with the uh, the cards like Red Brahmin, because, you know, it's turn 9, like, do you play around Brahmin or do you play to win? It's 99% of the time, it's just a right to play to win and just hope they don't have it. If it's a card like Ice Storm, you can justify playing around these things a lot more often, because it's much more likely to be something you have to face, but it's, like, such a tiny percent chance. Because you're always balancing, when you make a play, like the odds that it leads to you winning versus the odds that it leads to you losing in the long run, right? But a lot of the time, that's going to be heavily reliant on that incredibly high-impact card with a very unique, irreplaceable effect like Odavinger Red Brahmin. And if there's only one in the deck, it's like, ah, oh, is it really worth changing my calculations to play around this one of? No more deck tracker. Mungus. Hail Poka. It still exists, Mr. World. Don't go nuts. We'll bring it back one day. So, it's not a bad... Let's see, if I Skaven... I could Skaven double Nord into that and Firebolt it. And then... Just trade with that one. Let's shed some light on the problem. Let's heat things up. Oh. <laughs> I'm an idiot. Oh, 
Alex spending one more Nord than was required. I thought about it immediately after releasing the card, man. Feels bad. No one say anything. Alright, so I could have three Nords in my hand right now. <laughs> Six bits. Hail Polka. That Chevy. No one say anything about that extra Nord. We don't need it. It was unnecessary. <laughs> Stalking Shadow Scale? I like Stalking Shadow Scale a lot. The problem is that I like other three drops in Endurance more. Like, it's hard for me. Like, if, if we didn't have Dark Guardian, Young Mammoth, or Haunting Spirit, Stalking Shadow Scale would see a lot of play, I'm pretty sure. And the problem is that they all exist. That's really bogging down the deck slots, man. I have you now. Ugh. Escaping better than Daggerfall? Yeah, sure. Let's heat things up. <laughs> Market Archer, higher tier with more swims at night. I honestly, like again, I just haven't played that deck enough to know how good swims at night or the deck itself really is right now. We had the whole stream sniping discussion yesterday. I'm sure it happens a lot. I have a few people that come in and like to brag about it. Dude, Nick Burner coming in. Thank you very much, Nick. Welcome to the Polka Pack. Appreciate the support. Oh, now that is an explosion. We missed that with the Plinko Cup. Thank you very much, Nick. Let's get some CVH eggs and CVH blesses in the chat. Arkham Warlock's favorite emote combo from what I can tell. Thank you. And feel free to head over to the Subscriber Discord server, of course. Mr. New Vegas with all the different kinds of Polkas. Man, it's beautiful. And let's just play Merrick, I think. I see no compelling reason to not do this. Yeah, I made a premium Merrick. Now everything in the deck's premium. Oh! Alright. Oh! Ugh. I didn't even need that. I mean, the trade here is just too good. Alright, that's gotta be basically lethal, right? God, Ancestor's Battle Axe. Like, that was a Merrick buff if I've ever seen one. Alright. Time to fight. Talos. Time to fight. Alright, fine. Time to add more bits in the cup. Hail Polka. MR destruct. MR destruct. <laughs> Thank you for the bits, Mr. World. It's greatly Time appreciated. Why did not show up in the recent event thing? Oh wait, it did. Someone just followed. Okay, never mind. Oh, the five-five Breton Conjurer. Yikes. Man, that's huge. The elements are mine to control. Let's heat things up. By the eight, they will meet their makers. What a threat! Can you imagine if this was a if it was like a natural five-five? Ugh. I have many important things on my mind. <laughs> Honorable. All too simple. Yeah, premium cards that summon other cards, or uh, even search other cards. Like if I rift and pickpocket my opponent's deck or Thief of Dreams, uh, they will also generate premiums. 